Hi, hey, this is Lucas. Uh, we're going to try this without a tripod today. Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to look at a Logan Shaper. It's a more recent Shaper. It's the uh, the 8 inch version. And uh, it's got, uh, got the door here. I just wanted to show this off. Uh, I actually set this up so that you can uh, install the door quite easily without any tools. And then, uh, you know, open it up and uh, recoup the space underneath here where you can actually store a few things. So. Uh, the the uh, mill, or the uh, shaper rather, is a real competent shaper. It's uh, uh, Logan, as I mentioned, and uh, it's got a very heavy-duty uh, vise here, large box, and uh, the box has got uh, T-slots all around, which are, uh, I think, quite uh, superior to other systems where, uh, oh, you might have to tap a hole. And uh, apparently, I am mistaken, it's not all around. This side doesn't have them, but uh, they're on the other side, so uh, on the far side. Um, they've got a really heavy dovetail system here for the column, and uh, that's a nice thing. Um, on this shaper, it's actually got this, uh, the, on the clapper box here, uh, for the tool return, it's got this spring, which you can actually set with a, it's got a notch in it on this uh, on the far side there, left side away from my finger, uh, where you can uh, set it so that it, it actually doesn't engage the spring, or you can turn it a little bit and it will engage the spring, and that actually uh, helps just keep the chatter down. So I've got this set up for about a five and a half inch, uh, actually it's probably more like a six inch workpiece. Uh, might even be a little bigger than that. I'm guessing the jaws on the, on the vise here are six. That's probably close to uh, six and a half inches in on the workpiece. And we're taking a cut. It's at least an eighth of an inch deep. And uh, we're getting a real nice surface finish on it. Uh, uh, you can see a little bit of the tool here reflected in this end of it. And even with that uh, that deep of a cut, it gives a really nice finish. We're not advancing a great deal between cuts, but uh, the uh, depth of cut is uh, and the length of cut is pretty substantial. We're going to flip it on here in a minute. I just want to point out uh, another uh, couple of interesting features on it. Uh, it's got this chip deflector, chip catcher. Uh, this is a clear or was a clear piece of plexiglass, or uh, or uh, perhaps it's. Uh, uh, polycarbonate but uh, in any case it, it pops right off of there and uh, I think it's kind of a nice thing because it, it probably catches about 90 percent of the chips that are uh, that are generated we're gonna leave it off there now for the demonstration and uh, we're just gonna show it in operation it is a variable speed unit too. the speed controls right here so there's a chips coming right off there uh, just come off uh, it's, it's just fun to watch. Eh? I don't know, there's something kind of mystical about a shaper. All right, I'm adjusting the speed right now. And uh, we're going much slower. You can see, and then uh, we can speed it back up again. I'm doing that by this hand wheel. It's peeling up an excellent chip. Our uh, advance is roughly uh, oh, two to three thousandths then, uh, per cycle. Wanted to show the, uh, the cyclic system, the Scotch yoke. Uh, no brakes. I don't see any problem with this uh, with the shaper in terms of its mechanical uh, anything in the drive. I don't see any brakes, any cracks, any of the castings. It does have just a little bit of surface rust on it, but that would all clean up. I'm gonna slow it down here again. And I'm going to shut it off actually, and we'll uh, we'll go over some of the controls. So uh, obviously uh, we got you know we've got these are all half inch square uh, studs that accept the wrench. And here's the wrench. It's got the original wrench. Should point out too that the vise has the original uh, angular table. Uh, one can mount that on here. That's also uh, I guess we're going to go over the tooling. It's got. Uh, the, the internal uh, key cutting toolbar. So this actually mounts, uh, I believe it's going to actually replace this part of the lantern tool post. It should just mount right in there and then uh, you can cut a you can cut a, uh, a keyway with this. It actually looks like it's cut up, uh, set up to cut, almost looks like a threading tool on there. 
but it does look like it's a little bit less than 80 degrees including angle I'm not quite sure uh, how that uh, how that's set up it's got uh, a couple of spring tools this one's a neat one I, I've heard people having problems sometimes doing grooving getting chatter and uh, the spring tool ought to, ought to mitigate that um, it's got a couple of lathe tool holding holders it's a long slender one and it's got these two so uh, it also has the original uh, uh, ram travel uh, guide or indicator so okay back to this so here's a here's our wrench and uh, this will go on any of these uh, so we can use this to uh, it, you know move the move the vise back and forth the box with the vise on it so that's the way that works uh, this allows you you put it on this point to uh, uh, just check the motion of the system and make sure you're not gonna crash it into anything during a cycle um, this is the table elevating system so you would uh, put that in there and crank that uh, up or down but in order to do that you definitely want to loosen these bolts and uh, this corresponding support for the box but uh, this is all everything's here for it uh, we have another point at which we can uh, you know advance the ram or check the ram from the far side like so and then uh, I want to open this up and discuss the internals here so uh, this is how one adjusts the stroke so there's two controls on the stroke one is the uh, beginning and end point of the stroke which is actually determined by the setting of this uh, this this bolt in this slot so what you want to make sure of is that on the return stroke in particular that you don't crash this uh, part of the uh, the clapper box support into the uh, either the, the the cast iron or the wiper uh, we're set up we, we're not going to do that of course because it has been running and it did not crash into that but I did have to set it so that the ram was actually out quite a way so you can see it's the uh, the thread on this stud is actually left hand thread so to loosen it you actually turn this turn the handle this handle would be turned clockwise to loosen it and counterclockwise to tighten it so that's uh, uh, that's uh, very important to know. See how uh, the clapper box is working. Uh, the tool lifts up every uh, time on the return stroke, and the uh, spring actually comes off of the off the clapper box when that happens. And now we're actually taking it off. Though it's about four and a half thousandths per uh, per cycle, and still the same depth of cut. So I mean that's a it's a very sturdy shaper. Ordinarily, I wouldn't run the workpiece uh, that far off the vise. I just didn't take the time to set the vise a little bit further out on the on the box. I do have uh, parallels under the uh, workpiece here, and you can see we're almost to the end of the cut. And the vise hasn't been trammed in perfectly either, but it's close. Not sure uh, what the tool. What the history on the tool is, it has serrations on it. Most of them uh, have been ground away, but uh, boy, that's a, it's a really nice piece of steel, and it uh, seems to cut very well. It ground up nicely on my uh, bench grinder, too. chip diminishing as uh, as we go and it looks like the uh, device is tipped turn a little bit this way you would probably have to turn it back just a touch to get it all uh, nicely parallel to the uh, stroke 
uh, that's it. That's pretty much the surface that we're uh, that we're getting. And uh, boy, it looks uh, I think it looks really good. Yeah. There's a there was a little oil on this side. That's why this is darker than this side. But uh, the surface finish on it is uh, is quite good for such a deep cut. Really worked well. Hey, this is Lucas signing off.